Materials define our everyday life. They enable us to do so many things. And when you think about it, humanity has basically lived in the various eras of materials that have been available to us from the early Stone Age, through to the Metal Ages, the Paper Ages, and then into the Silicon Age, where we are able to store and move huge amounts of data. And all of these materials have been three-dimensional materials. That means they have a width, a breadth, and a height. And that's, that's normal to us, right? We think about these materials and we think about the physics that pertains to those. But really, maybe it's a little bit constrained. What happens if we were to reduce the dimensionality of the material? Say, get rid of one of them. So we'd say, let's no longer have those three and just have a width and a breadth. So this would be a two-dimensional material. And we could go one step further. We could say, let's just have a one-dimensional material, where we only have a length and no appreciable width or breadth. And you might say, well, what would the benefit of doing that be? Well, basically, when you confine the dimensions of a material, you will change the way the physics applies to those. And I can show you an example of one such material. And this is a model of something called graphene. And it's a two-dimensional material. And basically, it, it, it can be made by taking a, a piece of graphite, which is just pencil lead, and, and getting it down to just one atom thick, right? And you can see that it's, a, it's only one atom thick, but yet it has a length and a breadth. And because of that conformed uh, thickness, the material behaves very, very differently. And we can go a step further. We can take a sheet of graphene and we can roll it into a cylinder. And this is called a carbon nanotube. And now the diameter, the length, or the, sorry, the breadth and the width of this material is nano-sized, it's tiny, and therefore stuff is confined here and it only has a length. And because of that then, it also has very special materials. So nanomaterials in general are very, very strong and they can conduct electricity at times and also they can conduct heat. And this makes them extremely useful, uh, potentially, for the next generation of materials that you and I hopefully will, will, will enjoy. So, just as in the past when materials have, have enabled us to do amazing things and make massive leaps forward, I believe that low-dimensional materials will enable us to go that step further. Perhaps the next generation might be the nano uh, generation.